as one of cardiac surgery's most productive innovators, he will be remembered for his ingenuity, imagination, and boldness. Minneapolis Star Tribune columnist Kurt Brown Clarence Walton Lillehei took risks and developed new techniques used in heart surgery. Demonstrating determination and innovation through his work at the University of Minnesota and countless cardiovascular patents, his leadership left a lasting legacy in the medical field and the way open heart surgery is performed today. Curiosity for the human body has always been present. The first written evidence of surgical procedures come from ancient Egypt around the 17th century BCE. Records describe the advanced knowledge of the human body as it was being repaired through surgical trial and error. These experimental operations modified the techniques previously used and built a stable foundation for modern procedures pertaining to all parts of the body. One of the greatest feats in cardiovascular evolution was the completion of the first open heart surgery performed by Dr. F. John Lewis in 1952. Post-World War II, the 1950s encouraged growth in the United States. Due to this growth mindset, medical advancements such as the use of penicillin, a vaccine for polio, and Lewis's open heart surgery were developed. Although the surgery was successful, it was very basic, and the method of using hypothermia was not suited to fix pediatric heart defects. During the surgery, many problems arose. One major problem was insufficient time to complete the procedure due to lack of oxygen being provided to the patient. The procedure only allowed 10 minutes, therefore major problems could not efficiently be fixed. Dr. Lillai implemented a new technique called the cross-circulation method. This allowed the patient to be hooked up to a donor. The donor's body would then take over the process of pumping and oxygenating the patient's blood. Lillai first used this procedure on 14-month-old Gregory Glidden with his father as a donor. Lillai and his team successfully repaired Gregory's ventricle heart defect. Lillehi continued to use this method for the next year and successfully operated on 44 patients. Son of a dentist from Minneapolis, he planned at an early age to follow his father's footsteps. Ultimately, that was not the case. Throughout his childhood, he showed extensive curiosity in mechanics, once even fully disassembling and reassembling a Model T car. After high school, Lillehi attended the University of Minnesota and graduated with his medical degree in 1942. In 1945, after returning home from serving in the Army Medical Corps in World War II, he resumed his residency at the University of Minnesota. In 1945, he became a full-time instructor of surgery at the university. Soon after, in 1951, he acquired his doctorate and a master in physiology. Not the first to investigate open heart surgery, Lillehi's inventions and methods increased the chances of a patient's survival during surgery. Son of Dr. Clarence Lillehi, Dr. Craig Lillehi, pediatric surgeon at Boston Children's Hospital, spoke of his father's fearlessness. The striking thing about him was that he, um, he wasn't uh, afraid of new ideas, uh, even, even sometimes crazy ideas that, that uh, he would really fully consider them and, and uh, work through it and, and see, uh, and sometimes doing some experimentation and whatnot to find out whether, uh, whether they made sense or not. I think that was number one. I think that number two is that, that uh, he sort of uh, uh, saw the, the, the big goals uh, uh, and, uh, and relentlessly uh, pursued those. Certain open heart surgery techniques required a so-called heart-lung machine. This machine's job was to take over the meticulous work of pumping and oxygenating the blood. This intricate machine could weigh anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 pounds and be the size of a one-car garage. Once again, Lillehi had a solution. Even though a heart-lung machine was not required in cross-circulation, and Lillehi's method had a very low mortality rate, he sought something more simple. 
This impelled the production of the bubble oxygenator by Lillehei and Dr. Richard DeWall, a medical research colleague. This new oxygenation machine would be connected to the patient using polyethylene tubes. Compared to a heart-lung machine, it was inexpensive, easier to use, portable, sterile, and at the end of a procedure, the machine would be disposed of. By the year of 1955, the bubble oxygenator had virtually replaced cross-circulation. Lillehei patented the machine and then generously gave the patent to the University of Minnesota. Later, a company called Travenol started to commercially produce the DeWall Lillehei bubble oxygenator. This helped introduce the possibility of open heart surgery in other parts of the country and world. In 1955, Lillehei found his next project. He ran into the complication of heart blocks. A heart block is a type of arrhythmia a human being is either born with or can develop, and it causes the heart to beat abnormally slow. This can cause difficulty in a surgical procedure, and the mortality rate for a patient who developed or had an undiagnosed heart block was 100%. Vincent Gott developed a solution by using the GRASS physiological simulator to regulate the heartbeat with electric current. He successfully got the heart to beat at a normal pace. Lillehei then started to use this machine somewhat infrequently as it was cumbersome and required a constant power source. The first patient was on this machine January 20th, 1957. By April, Lillehei said to his friend Earl Bakken, an electrical engineer graduated with Lillehei from the U, we've got to get some pacemaker that's battery driven. Bakken accepted his challenging request. Ultimately, in four weeks, what Bakken had developed was a rough model of an external pacemaker. Bakken had been running a medical repair business with his brother-in-law called Medtronic. After the invention of the pacemaker, Bakken's business developed from a startup in his garage to today being a multi-million dollar empire. Lillehei played a large part in the development of Medtronic and continued to work with Bakken throughout his career. The whole infrastructure of Medtronic was built upon the initial request of a pacemaker from Lillehei. The legacy of this invitation is still living through the company and the products Medtronic produces today. According to the American Heart Association, 600,000 pacemakers are implanted each year. Later in his career, Lillehei played a major role in the development of four mechanical heart valves, consisting of the 1966 Lillehei Nakib toroidal valve, the 1967 Lillehei Caster tilting disc valve, the Kalki Lillehei bileafid valve in 1968, and finally the most established valve, the St. Jude, made in the year 1977. Today, this device is helping more than 1.3 million people live normal lives. Undeterred by the previous development of heart valves, Lillehei continuously desired to improve and perfectionize other models. This demonstrates superiority, for he was not concerned with the fame of being the first, but strove to be the creator of the last. Throughout the course of his efforts in medical development, Lillehei continuously kept the well-being of patients and their family his first priority. Lillehei's mentor Owen Wagenstein once stated that thousands of cardiac surgeons can trace their lineage back to him. His leadership shows through his and his team's constant determination to find solutions for dilemmas that are regarded as impossible. His legacy continues to be prevalent through his students and mentees. Dr. Christian Baynard and Dr. Norman Shumway, credited as heart transplant pioneers, both trained under Lillehei. He is still making an impact close to home as 60% of cardiovascular surgeons in Minnesota are trained at the Lillehei Heart Institute in Minneapolis. Without the intuitive way Lillehei practiced medicine, the modernity of our surgical procedures may not exist. Although no being can be eternal, the ideas and evolutionary ways of one can live on and inspire generations beyond.